Bro, let's go. Let's go. Another episode. I'm so excited for this one. So excited. This is our true friend, right? Like this is for an sure. actual friend that for lives sure. very close to us. <laughs> He's dear to our heart. Hung my pleasure, pleasure having you on, man. Um, introduce yourself. Um, maybe how you got started into real estate, um, why you chose short-term rentals, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, so my name is Hung Mai and, uh, thank you guys so much for having me on the podcast. Um, this is my first one ever, so I'm super excited about that. <laughs> um, I actually didn't choose short-term rental. I feel like short-term rental sh chose me. <laughs> I, uh, I have, um, so I, I just started about 12 months ago. So, uh, 12 months ago. So last March and, uh, I was kind of managing properties for my parents. Like they got a, a good size, you know, portfolio. Um, but I wasn't doing anything about, you know, anything about it. I think I was doing like marketing at the time. And so, uh, but there was this one property that was, um, that was not renting out for like two and a half months. Right. So I reached out to a friend of mine that I met at like a Tony Robbins event, right. <laughs> Cause that's where you meet all the cool people. And so, uh, reached out to him. I said, Hey, would this property do well? And he says, yeah, it would do really well, but you're going to have to like put down like eight to 10 K to furnish it, you know? And, you know, I think the the fear with most of people, most people, when they first get started, when they transition from like long-term to short-term rentals, is that like, okay, now you got to actually have to put like, you know, money into the property and furnish it. But the fear is that what happens if you put money into it and it doesn't get booked, right? Like whatever, what happens if it's crickets? And so same thing for me, I was like, uh, I wasn't ready and I wasn't ready to put down that money. So, uh, but at the time, a uh, really great thing happened was I was living uh, at an apartment, the Adeline, shout out to the Adeline. <laughs> and uh, two of my roommates, they, uh, they moved out two months early before the lease ended. So I said, why don't I try it here first? I just told them, hey guys, leave your furnitures. If things work out, I'll, I'll buy everything. I'll buy, I'll buy you guys out. And if it doesn't, you guys can come back and just get, grab your stuff like you're supposed to. So uh, I think I maybe put an extra thousand dollars down and uh, listed it. And within like, I think three, four days, I got six weeks of bookings for five grand. Wow. And uh, I was like, whoa, there's something here. Cause I was just trying to live there for free and maybe like, you know, uh, pay the difference just, just to see if it works out. But that really opened my eyes to short-term rentals. Um, but I never got to see any of that money <laughs> cause at the time I was, uh, uh, you know, I'm always, a uh, uh, do it and ask for forgiveness later. Right. So I, I <laughs> so the following Monday, the management called me and uh, they said, Hey, uh, uh, are you doing short-term rentals at our apartment? I was like, what's, you know, uh, what's the problem? They're like, well, the problem is, uh, we don't allow it. Uh, and it's going against your lease prop policy. So ended up shutting it down, never got to see any of it, but it gave me the proof of concept I needed to go and do that house. That was like vacant for now three months. Right. So, uh, basically I rented it and for my parents and, uh, furnished the place. Didn't have any money back then, so I maxed out all my credit cards because <laughs> you know that's what great investors do, right? So leverage, uh, leverage for sure, right? for sure. And so got started in that, and uh, ever since then, uh, I haven't looked back. I think now we have over uh, six property under management and working on uh, another two. Wow, it's, yeah, amazing. That's a great lesson to yeah. to learn. I mean, even though you didn't make any money from it, like yeah. it gave you that proof of concept. That's all you is, need, really. Super valuable. So. Yeah. Love hearing that. So um, you have six going on seven. Um, what I know is these bad boys are like really cash flowing, though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, for the first for the first couple months, you know, it was a lot of like uh, trial and error and learning from uh, my friend. And he just kind of gave me the training wheels to get started. But as I get more and more into it, like, you know, I started to test more with the pricing strategies and, you know, what seems to be, do good and well. And um, uh, the, the light switch happened was when um, I set up our second one. Uh, and and, and the, the question I asked too, is like when I first got started, I said, like, what's the easiest route 
to get to my first 10 property as quickly as possible, right? Like if I, if I can make it as easy as possible, what would that route look like? And for me, like something popped out in my head once I asked that question was go through friends and families, like see if any of them have properties that they are already renting out that you know are good properties, um, but it's easier to talk to them than just like a typical, so true. Uh, typical, mm -hmm. you know, random uh, person, right? And so they, you have the credibility with them. You have, uh, you, you can overcome objections a little bit easier with them. And uh, it's easier to kind of like negotiate. And so, um, like I said, once, once I got into that second property, I really tested the pricing strategy that was uh, kind of like, see you know seeing and learning and um i think within like a week we had a month-long booking for a couple months out and you know at i i put it something astronomical because i w because there was still stuff that needed to be done it's like the property wasn't done but i just <laughs> listed it just to see what's going on and i made sure i put it high so that no one books it right <laughs> like in the short term so no one books it but then a booking comes in for like twenty thousand dollars. Oh wow! Wow, for a month, like I think 36, 37 days, um, and they're like, "Hey, you know, like we're coming in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on uh, mater maternity leave, and I'm from New York, and uh, you know, I, I love your property. You know, it wasn't done, but <laughs> I, I did the most that I could so far, and you know, I was tackling this thing, and I knew after doing my first one that." I'm not set out to be the designer of the property. So I hired someone, uh, which is like a key thing for me. It's if you have the, the capital to hire a designer to maximize your profit, like it will go such a long way than just trying to pinch a penny. Yeah, great ROI on your investment. Great, R 100%. one of the best ROI on your investment. And so um, talked it back and forth and we ended up around like 15 grand, right? And she's like, hey, you know, I'll book it out off platform so we can say, you know, so that I can save a little bit. I'm like, totally fine with me. Right. <laughs> so, uh, that, that that's kind of how it got started. It's like, wow. Like there's, I can't believe that, you know, there's people paying this amount of money. And so that's when I really like deep dived into that arena and then really, uh, figuring out that where I want to position myself. Yeah. And, uh, you're hooked so, at that point. Yeah. I mean, um, it, I mean, it is like addicting feeling whenever you make 15 grand or 20 grand, in a single month, you're just like, wow, 100%. exactly. I mean, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like Vegas on steroids, you know, <laughs> so uh, with true. Airbnb, yeah. you know, it's like sometimes random notification comes on and you're like, I didn't even do anything. Yeah. And I mean, like at $15,000, $20,000 a month, you don't need a lot of those. I mean, some nope. people can just retire or quit their W2s nine to five just with one of those properties. Yeah. Let alone having 10, like, you know, you're aspiring to do. Yeah. So that is wild, man. Congrats on the first yeah. one and just like failing forward. Cause like you said, you didn't have everything figured out yet. Right. No. You know, and I think most of the time people will get caught up in analysis paralysis, but what you really should be doing is just trying to fail forward, continue to make, um, you know, conservative efforts at action and get 1% better. Right. So exactly. That's the way to do it, man. Action. action. Take action for sure. So you're at six or seven. Um, are you owning any of these or all, all these management or arbitrage? Like what's your preferred method right now? Yeah. So, um, as when I first got started, like I told you guys, um, it was because of an accident. Like I never thought I'd be in this space, not a, not a light years. Right. I was still doing kind of like the marketing side of things, um, and dabbling in wholesaling, um, just learning that trade and, and stuff like that. But then this kind of fell into my lap and I, I realized that there's like this space where people don't have to own their own properties to be able to cash flow uh, on them. And so uh, because of that, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Like if I can, you know, help the landlord pay whatever it is, you know, the rent that they're looking for, like I don't need to personally own it if I don't have the capital to go and lock up my own property yet. And it's a lot cheaper to go and furnish the property and uh, put the down payment and security to go and put one of these listings up. Uh, and once, you know, 80% of the hard work is, you know, in the front end, 
is what I think about it. Like, sure. and once it's done, once it's up, I just feel like it's kind of like a, a legal printing machine sometimes. <laughs> smooth sailing, baby. A smooth sailing, you know? Yeah, so. Of course there's hiccups. There don't, is, don't, don't get us wrong. Oh, yes, I mean, there, there it, is. It, it, uh, <laughs> disclaimer, there is hiccups. There's definitely some yeah, hiccups let's, for sure. um, Let's talk about some of those and also some of the systems that you're using, you know, now to help the management side of things, right? Because right. we know there's a lot of work up front, but there's also a lot of work to manage them. And so what are some of the things that you're doing to kind of help that process? Yeah, so um, definitely get a uh, PMS um, that helps with managing uh, systems. I haven't really tried a lot of them out. Um, you know, I know, I know a lot of people use like Guesty or Wheelhouse. Um, I personally use Hospitable. Um, their interface is pretty friendly enough for me. Um, and they, they have everything that kind of what I'm looking for. And basically what these thing does is you, you, you want to try and set up a lot of the automation, like the, the, re um, the repetitive, uh, messaging that you need to send every time. Like, you know, if someone, let's say, uh, has questions like that, they're, once they ask a question that something or someone is responding back right away. Like it's because I'm in marketing, I know it's really important that the speed to lead kind of deal. It's mm -hmm. like if within like a first five minutes, if you don't get back to someone, they're going to go somewhere else. Similar, like if you and me were to go and inquire about something, a service or a product, and someone doesn't reply back to us right away, like we're, we're just going to go to the next guy. Right. And so I, I knew right away that that was really important. So we set up like inquiry message. So when someone comes uh, first inquire about it, there's a message that sends out right away saying, Hey, you know, someone is, is going to get back to you right away with your question. And these dates are available, which is, uh, sometimes one of the, um, questions like they'll ask, like, is this available? Um, which is, you know, uh, funny sometimes because it is available. If it wasn't available, they right. wouldn't be able to comment Air, about Air, it. <laughs> Airbnb would let them know if yeah, it wasn't exactly. available. Exactly. So, so there's that. And then there's a confirmation message, which every, um, every booking they get. So that way they know what to expect, right? You, you try and set the expectations and then letting them know that, Hey, you know, like three days before we're going to, we're going to touch base with you, touch base, base with you again, just to figure out and see if there's anything else that you need from us. And then on that, uh, three day before we'll just say, Hey, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, hi, this is just a friendly reminder. We look forward to your arrival in the next three days. Uh, here's my cell phone number. If in case of an emergency, if not, just message us through, uh, the Airbnb app. And then, uh, we'll say that the next time we, we, we check in with them is, you know, 10 AM that morning. And so that's where they'll get like the instructions on how to check in to their, pro to the property. And, um, and so we'll send them all the check-in inf information at 10 AM, everything is automatic. And then if they're staying for multiple nights, not just one night, we'll, we'll send them a, a, a one, uh, like a, a next morning message saying, how was your night's day? Is there anything that we can do better? Or is there anything that you think that we can help to better accommodate you? And then I think the night before we have a checkout instruction for people to, you know, just kind of tidy up a little bit. So that way they help the cleaners, uh, one cut down on, on their cleaning time. And then two, um, just so that way, uh, we, we have that leverage of taking, uh, reminding them that, that their checkout is tomorrow at X amount of time, because sometimes people forget and then they, you know, they just check out at noon and I've learned that the hard way. Um, and then the next morning we remind them again, two hours before checkout that, Hey, you know, we look, uh, thank you for staying with us. Your checkout is at X, Y, and Z. And then we give them the checkout instructions again just to reaffirm it and, and uh, uh, remind them. So all of those, it's all automatic. And then there's, and there's some things who where uh, when, when they book, our team, our, our cleaning team that we hire, they get a notification, go out to them and say, hey, there's a booking for X day to X checkout. And then on the, the, the night before they check out, they'll get another reminder text message saying, hey, just a real friendly reminder in the next 24 hours, our guest is checking out. So that way um, they have a reminder. So everything is is automated in that sense. And then if any hiccups happen, uh, we communicate through Slack. Uh, and then, you know, that really just helps us be organized with our conversation about each property. Communicate with your cleaners. 
communicate with our cleaners. Yeah, Got so it. we require the cleaners to be on our cha- like communications uh, channel, just so that it's it's easier because it's it's hard to to talk to each um, you know cleaning team up in different channels. So I just make sure that they're um, that they're okay with talking with us on a certain channel. And so it, unless they're not uh, they're okay, we try. Uh, we try to work with the ones that are okay with working on our communi- communication channel, less stressful. It's like the little things, but uh, but you keep the com- communication very um, very organized, so that way you're not in a hundred group group message, you know, about what property. Because some sometimes uh, your cleaners have multiple properties that they're taking care of as well. So, yeah, That's super smart. I, I, w- I was uh, curious. So you're talking about Airbnb a bunch. Are you also on VRBO and Booking.com or any other platforms? Yeah. So uh, the only ones that we are on is Airbnb and VRBO. Um, those are the two main ones. Um, uh, Airbnb, I think, gives us about like the majority, 70 to 80 percent of our bookings. And then VRBO is like the other like 15, 20 percent. Oh, wow. So you are having some success on VRBO. Yeah, which is I think is uncommon or, or you know different at least from some of the the uh, other hosts or guests that we've had on. Right, you know they're just strictly on Airbnb, um, mainly because they're just not getting much bookings. Are you doing anything differently on VRBO that you think is setting yourself apart to actually get those bookings? Um, I think uh, no, no. I mean it's like why fix what's working right now? Sure. Um, and you know we always try and optimize where we can. And so, I mean, just making sure that your um, your photos have captions in them, so that way you're 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 capturing people's attention, and that as they're scrolling, they're slowing down to read those description in the photos Blue because <laughs> <laughs> in the photos because then they're on your listings longer, which is telling VRBO or Airbnb that hey, like there's interest in this this uh, property versus others who don't have those captions. And they're just going to keep clicking through the, the 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 photo gallery, and then they're just going to go to the next one. So super smart, yeah. Yeah, help help with the algorithm for sure. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, like uh, Airbnb and and VRBO has like an interest algorithm. So the longer that you can keep people on your listing, the better. I mean, even if there's just window shopping, I want them to stay around to, you know, give me that uh, uh, um, viewership. It's kind of like, you know, you don't have to go in and shop at Gucci, but I want you to see that there's a line outside, Yeah, you know? And so it's kind of like that same scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I actually have like games in between each one of my photos. So they stop and they play the game. They move on to the next photo. They stop and play a game. Oh, wow. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> oh, no, I'm saying, uh, I, I'm saying, I need whoa. to know that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally playing. No, but that's smart, man. Yeah, yeah. definitely try to take advantage of the algorithm, um, yeah. you know, and use it to your advantage for sure. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Do you find that VRBO caters to specific property types or is it just because of the you know, process that you're implementing? Because I've heard that VRBO caters to higher end properties, more vacation destinations. Are you seeing any trends in that area or is it just because you're doing the, the proper things to market it? Um, you know, I, I, I can't really pinpoint exactly to what it is that we're doing. I just know that what we're doing on Airbnb, we are also doing on VRBO. And it's kind of like, you know, if something is working over here, you know, I don't see why it wouldn't work over here either. And of course, like with VRBO, the the um, the percentage that they take, I think it's like six uh, percent uh, versus Airbnb is only three percent. And so you want to adjust like your prices um, accordingly. But uh, I know for a fact that a, a VRBO guests do pay a little bit more than Airbnb guests. Um, I don't know why. I think it's just maybe an older demographic but they're willing to pay a little bit more uh, on VRBO than, than um, Airbnb. Like for instance, um, we had a, uh, we had uh, during the week of EDC, for example, um, because ours is priced uh, com- pretty high um, that we don't really don't get booked out very early. Um, but as it gets closer to certain events or certain um, things, um, 
we tend to kind of float to the top because by that point, there's only, a, you know, a number of properties left. And when you're competing with, you know, rocks versus like diamonds, right, like, then it's going to float yours up because you're going to get more eyeballs at that point. And for our three bedroom, two and a half bath, our typical nightly rates are about um, around like 300, 345. Um, we were getting $900 a night for um, a, that three day weekend. And so, um, you know, that pricing strategy, you know, works really well that you try not to get booked out too early um, and you just kind of let it play out and, and wait a little bit. But yeah, in terms of VRBO, um, guests are willing to pay a little bit more on there. Uh, it's what I see. So as the audience can tell, you are incredibly intelligent. What are some things that you're doing to educate yourself? Are you in any mentorships? Are you going to any events? How are you learning all this material as a newer short-term rental investor? I am, uh, you know, I think I'm like the perfect example of like, I really didn't buy any courses. I, you know, I didn't have the money. I told you that when I first got started 12 months ago, like, I was just, you know, I was maxing out my credit card there. Like there was no, you know, reserve money or anything like that. And, um, I just ate up everything that was on YouTube. I learned, you know, I, you know, all the, all the, I had to separate, you know, with a course, you know, I think there's like good things that you can, you know, it's condensed, it's organized, but, you know, going through YouTube university, right. You have to kind of you, ha you kind of have to uh, split between like the, the, the good and the bad, like the blue gems and the, you know, not yes. so blue gems, right? For sure, <laughs> so, for sure. So, you know, I think the first two, you know, two, three months, I had an AirPod on like all day and anything that I was listening to, it was short-term rentals and just kind of like absorbing it, seeing what, what's up, like, you know, seeing what this guy is doing well and implementing it, seeing what this guy, this girl is doing well and implementing it and just adding it to, you know, what I'm doing, you know, as I go along, like, oh, this guy is, is doing really great on, you know, automating it. And, you know, he, this girl doesn't have any properties, uh, you know, near her, but she's like hosting it far away. How is she doing that? Right. And so I learned all of those things. And I just knew that like down the line that I didn't want to be the person cleaning up, uh, you know, after the properties or taking care of it. And so I made sure that, you know, if I was to go into this, I'm going to make sure that the profit margins is there. So that way I can hire the right people and I can take care of the guests and make sure that things are running smoothly and it doesn't hurt our profit margins. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can uh, do to add profit to your margins on top of just the booking itself too. Love that. Um, let's talk about markets. So how many markets are you in? Um, and do you have any eyes on any future markets that you just can't wait to break into? Uh, so currently I am in uh, Orlando, of course, in Tampa and um, in Houston. Um, Vegas. And Vegas. Yes, of course. Yes, Vegas. <laughs> Vegas I totally too. forgot that. Yeah. Yeah, so, too many guys. <laughs> <laughs> Can't keep track. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to JB's level, but, um, <laughs> but, um, for, for the, the markets that I'm really excited to kind of get into is, uh, it's called, uh, Seaside by, by, uh, Destin, Florida mm -hmm. up in the panhandle. And just, you know, after learning more and more about it, you know, the, the opportunity up there, it, I think it's really great. Um, I know the Smoky Mountains is something, uh, is someone, it's uh, a place that everyone kind of talks about, right? And, uh, but I think most people don't realize like there's the other side of the Smokies as well on the other side of the mountains as well. And so kind of look into like some of those markets as well. Haven't really, you know, like um, put any like hard, uh, hard inquiries in that area yet, but definitely looking. And then, uh, Atlanta and Georgia for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think this is really, you know, I just, this is really like fulfilling my dream of having properties across the country. Um, I just had family. I literally dropped off my, uh, my cousins, um, at the airport, like an hour before I got here. <laughs> and, uh, we had our first 
family reunion on my dad's side for the first time to celebrate my grandma's passing about two years ago. And uh, I think like, you know, 20 people showed up to, to, to Orlando, right? Like they're from Iowa, from Texas. And I got to host them at wow. my Airbnbs. <laughs> and it was like the best feeling ever because, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I'm, I'm really about family. And getting to do this, I get to host my friends and my families that are from out of state, uh, but especially seeing family for the first time, like all together when they're spread out everywhere um, for the first time is really cool. And, uh, you know, it reminds me like, you know, like this is why I do it for, you know, like, and, um, and it was, it was really amazing uh, to have the opportunity to do that. That's awesome. But I mean, Aiden and I didn't even get an invite. Where were we at, bro? Uh, the, 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 food, awesome, the food was uh the food was uh incredible. Next time for sure. You oh, guys are yeah, you guys yeah, are invited next heart, time. Bro. <laughs> hey, now we're you know my wife's Vietnamese, so uh, I know, I know. I'm super sad right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so cool though, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, those are the advantages that come with owning properties and especially Airbnbs. Because if you have long-term renters in there locked in for a full year lease, you can never utilize that space. Exactly. You know? And I think people sleep on that advantage that comes with short-term rentals too. Right. So Exactly. Awesome. So short-term rentals, going off of that point, it, they kind of fell into your lap. So were you researching real estate before then? Were you learning about different strategies? Like, so if you didn't go into short-term rentals, would you st still have been in the real estate space or you don't think so? Um, I was, I, you know, I think, uh, I, um, uh, I said it briefly, I think at the beginning is that like, when I first got started, I was actually, you know, trying to get into wholesaling and, um, you know, I think till this day, I have not done a single wholesale deal. <laughs> um, what but, is wholesaling real quick, uh, just for the viewers? Like what we hear that term all the time and just for our new viewers. It's a buzzword. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, like what is wholesaling exactly? Yeah, so uh, it's it, it was an interesting word for me too. Like wholesaling basically is when you uh, lock a property up uh, under a contract. Let's say the property is worth um, 100,000. You know, I don't think there's any $100,000. <laughs> uh, let's say the property is worth $300,000. No, not in Florida. <laughs> no, not in Florida. Um, uh, $300,000. Um, after being fixed up, right? Uh, ARV after repair value. Um, but it needs a little work and the seller is maybe is in a, uh, dire situation and you're there to help them and they can't list it with on market because it takes too long, you, you know, for some reason. Right. And so you'll, you'll lock it up for maybe, you know, $200,000 and, um, you go and now you have that contract and you go and sell that contract to maybe a fix and flipper for, you know, uh, 210. And now they have another $90,000 and they can go and put, you know, maybe $40,000 or $30,000 into the property. And they still have about $60,000 left in equity. And so once they sell it um, with fees and everything else, they'll make, you know, $20,000, $30,000. And that's kind of the, and so that part where you sell it, from you took the contract from two hundred thousand dollars to two ten, you get to keep that ten in between, and that's called wholesaling. Nice. So it almost seems like a win-win because you're helping out the seller who's in dire situation. Exactly. You get to make a ten k assignment fee, right? Mm -hmm. And the fix and flipper makes uh, good income as well. So like literally just a win-win-win overall. A win-win-win. Exactly. So yeah, awesome. but that's the thing. You started I, there, but then I you never there, did I never any even, wholesale deals. I, yeah, <laughs> I think the closest I ever got was uh, locking a property up under contract. And I don't think that contract ever got disposed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like one thing led to another. Um, you know, it's just something that um, God kind of put into my life. And uh, I'm super grateful for it, for everyone that I came into contact with, JB and you guys. Um, just learning from every person that I come across. And uh, so, yeah, just super grateful and just taking it one step at a time and just taking action. Sure. As you start taking to scale, um, what, who is going to be the first person that you bring on your team to help facilitate or delegate some of these tasks? Because I already know that, you know, we're starting to hit bottlenecks in our business and we need, you know, more help. So like, what's the first person if you hadn't already brought mm -hmm. someone on, 
who's that person going to be? What's their uh, ob obligations and responsibilities in the business? Yeah, I mean, um, I have started, you know, um, before the podcast, I was saying I was so while I'm do doing the short term rental business, I'm, I'm still working at my family's business. Um, my family own a nail salon, <laughs> you know, shout out to all the Vietnamese out there, <laughs> you know, killing it. Um, but I, I still help them out um, just because they need it. And so I'm there like Friday to Sunday. And that typically is about 25 to 30 hours um, there during the week. And so I only get to work on the short term rental side about Monday through Thursday. And so, um, you know, uh, when I was at one or two property, it was okay. You know, like uh, message, messages was coming in sporadically and, you know, I could handle it. But now that we're, we're up to like, you know, six and soon seven, we're, we're running to like, you know, I had to uh, run into the, like I, I, I would be working on a, a, a client, right? <laughs> I would be working on a client and then a, a notification comes on and it'll, it'll be like a, a five, a fire of some sort, like small or big, right? Maybe like the lock is not working or like the auto generated um, code that was supposed to generate and it said it generate, but it didn't generate, right? <laughs> and so like glitches and stuff, stuff like that happens. And so, you know, these people can't wait half an hour for you to finish what you're doing. They, they gotta get in there right away because it all, it's all about the, the guest experience. And you kind of, you know, being on Airbnb and VRBO is great. They do all the marketing, but you're kind of at, at their mercy, right? Like you're, um, it, you live and die on those reviews. So you really have to uh, make sure that your communication is, is on point so that if there's um, any problem, the problem is, is usually not the deal. It's how you handle it. It's, it's the main point, right? Like the, there could be something catastrophic that happens, but as long as you handle it in a timely manner, it's what they really all care about. And so, you know, I would be doing client and running to the back and just, you know, sending a quick message and then running back up to go work. And then, you know, they'll call me while I'm working. And so I would run to the back again. And, you know, <laughs> this, this kept going on. And then my parents was like, like, you're taking too long and you're doing all that. You're running a relay. Yeah, exactly. And so that's when, that's when I, yeah. And, and the thing is like, they still don't really know what I'm doing. You know, I really don't tell them, you know, they're just there because they're, they're Asian parents and you know, I, they're, they're more of like, show me, not tell me. So I, you know, I just want to make sure that I get it right before I, you know, I let them know what's going on. And so, um, uh, what is it? And so like, that's when I knew that I need to hire someone. So I hired someone for the last like two months and he, I've been training him to be kind of like my right hand man. And so once, um, he's, you know, he's getting better and better and kind of like getting to know how I respond and getting to know, like, you know, I, I, I told him, he's like, how should I respond to people? Right. And I was like, have you ever been to Chick-fil-A? And, he, and he's like, yeah, I've been to Chick-fil-A. Like you had a good experience. He's like, yeah, like I really like them. And he's like, like, so whenever you, uh, uh, whenever you say thank you, what do they say? Oh, uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah. I was like, exactly. Just do all that. Talk exactly like them. I want you to give them the Chick-fil-A experience. And so, so, you know, I'm, I've been training him through that. And, um, and so I think once he gets to a good point, he's going to manage our VAs that we're going to hire pretty soon. Um, just so that way I can step back um, as much as I can from it and focus more on like the, uh, the money making activities, which is like, you know, acquiring more properties, um, uh, uh, go in and uh, generate more private money, um, how to raise more funds so that we can do more deals. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's ultimately the next step, right? For anyone trying to scale, it's figuring out how to focus on revenue generating activities and not just the mundane repetitive procedures that can be outsourced because you cannot outsource your own personal brand. Yeah. Right. So if you want to go and raise private money, you can't outsource Hong. You have to be present. You have to be out there. You have to be building your own brand, your own credibility. Right. And so it makes sense for you to spend your time there versus just sending messages back and forth to, to a guest. Exactly. Exactly. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, and, and the, the, I think the main point of it is that you have to, uh, let go of your ego. A lot of times, most people think that, you know, what happened if I let go and then, you know, they don't take care of the guests and they don't respond in a timely manner and you just have to train them. 
um, and make sure that they know what your standards are. And so, and you just let them kind of grow into that, into that role, right? It's like, you got to accept the fact that they're going to mess up and they're going to, um, uh, do something that, that is not up to your standard, but as long as you give them a chance to fix it and they do fix it, then that's great. You know? And, but that's the main thing. I, I just know that I'm not the smartest guy in the room. And, uh, if I can find someone that can do it better than I can, like for instance, um, a designer to help me design my space, then, uh, you know, Mazel Tov. I'm gonna, I'm mm-hmm. gonna give it to them. Okay? Right. I, I am colorblind when it comes to color scheme, mm-hmm. and I, and I, and I'm not that that good either with a power tool. And I found that out the first property I did. It took me no lie, 30 minutes to put a, a painting on the wall. And so I was like, I'm not cut out for this. Yeah. So, uh, so delegate as much as you can, and don't let things that you don't know stop you. I think that's the main thing. Uh, don't, don't let. Uh, just because you 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 might not know how to do something, don't let it stop you. Like it's it's not about what you what you know. It's about who you know. So if you don't know something, find out who already knows what that is that you're trying to do, that has been doing it for years and years, and just bring them on board, or hire them, or JV with them. Um, it's not about you know you trying to do everything. And so that's kind of like how I've got started, how I've done things is, you know, I, I didn't know anything and I, you know, I'm still a student. I'm always learning um, and just trying to be in a room where, you know, I'm kind of like the smallest guy, you know, like you feel a little, you feel a little uncomfortable being around them, you know? Um, and so just trying to find those, you know, those rooms and, and try and get myself in the door in those room is, is what Love I would that. say. And man, you've had, uh, amazing success in just a short period of time. I'm curious what your goals are. Like in the next year, where do you plan on being? And in the next five years, like I want to hear, cause I know you have some big aspirations, some big goals. Yeah. And like, even before I hear it, I'm already excited for you. So like, what are you, what are you up to? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much, um, you know, for, for this year, um, I was, um, invited to be uh, part of a, a Zoom series with a friend of mine called, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Tom Swan, he, who's in Arizona. He's, uh, I, I don't know if he, you guys have had a chance to meet, but he is just an incredible guy. We got connected through uh, one of our friend, Kevin Cho. And uh, for the first conversation that we had together, we talked th- for three hours. Oh, wow. And we just knew like something was there. And so we found out, you know, he, he does short term rentals. I did short term rentals. And so, you know, we were just like throwing ideas back and forth, seeing how we can add value to, you know, our, our, uh, investor group, our, you know, in, in our, in sub two. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, after talking about it, um, that night, you know, we set up a 90 day challenge to help other people because we're like, like this really changed my life, you know, like this, you know, I went from, you know, just kind of trying to figure things out to now, you know, six property under management. Um, and, um, you know, the three that we have now, um, we're, we're, we're doing about, you know, around 15 K a month net, uh, flow. Guys, that is literally really, really good money. You know, I mean, this is what's that's life changing. And and that was only in 12 months. So like, I can't wait till we can drop like the comments below and and share where people can reach out so that you can help. You know, I I know that you're a giver, a go giver 100 percent. So you're going to help change people's lives. I love that about you, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm 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 an open book. I mean, I I. I know, I know none of the information that I have is mine to start with anyways. And so that. as long as I can help anyone else, you know, like it's, it really, uh, I think just, I, I feel that, you know, if I can help someone that was in my shoes when I first got started, I really, you know, just had that one friend, but then, you know, I later found out, you know, he had one property, uh, for the whole, uh, time since I, I talked to him. Uh, from, uh, you know, from when he first got started, when I met him to, you know, when we first talked about this property. And so um, everything else kind of like learn along the way. But, you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an open book. I love helping people. 
Uh, I just know that, you know, I, I, I love this analogy. I think I heard it from, uh, Tim, Tim, Tim Bratz. And he says, he says, uh, he sees giving like sun sunlight just because you got sunlight from the sun. It doesn't take any away from me. Right. Love it. And so I just think that as I pour more into others, like they're going to change their life and they're going to go on and they're going to help other people as well. And so, uh, you know, you, uh, you attract what you put out and, uh, you know, it's, that's, it's, it's, it's been a recurring event throughout my life that as I do, so I attract people like, you know, you guys like JB and Aiden into my life, right? Like, uh, there's, there's people out there that are looking for, uh, you, you know, and if you just put out that energy and you just do the work, um, that you're going to find them, uh, you know, don't do this alone. It's really lonely. Um, if, if you do it by yourself, so find a partner, uh, find a, a, a group, find a community and, you know, run with it. Um, it. yeah, that's what I would say. Powerful. Community is everything. Community. It's yeah. everything. Um, a wonderful podcast so far. Uh, I thought, I think we're starting to near the end. So you want to go into some of the formal questions? One of my favorite questions to ask, and you've already dropped so many gems and given so much advice, but I would want to know if I'm a new real estate investor, what would be the one piece of advice you would give me? Um, I would say, um, if you're trying to get into short-term rentals, you know, the first thing that you don't have is, or is looking for is, is income, right? Income coming in, cash flow coming in. And I love wholesaling. I think wholesaling is amazing. Um, however, um, uh, and, and you can get a really big, you know, uh, wholesaling assignment fee, uh, you know, when you do one of those deals. But the thing is after you that assignment fee, you got to go and look for the next one with, um, uh, with short-term rentals or short-term rental arbitrage. Um, it's something that you can set up one time and, um, it will keep generating revenue for you over and over and over again. And if you can do it once, you can do it again and again and again. And don't let money be the thing that stops you. Uh, money is the least of your wor wor worries. As long as you can find a property that you think will do well, um, then the money will come through either a, f a friend, a family, or someone that is also interested in it, but don't want to do the work and they can fund it for you. Um, and so that's what I would say is just, you know, take, take, take action is one thing. But, uh, you know, find out people who are already doing it and do what exactly what they did. I mean, that, that's what I did. I, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know, uh, you know, what furnish, you know, how Airbnb worked until 12 months ago. I was brand new. Didn't know anything about it. But that's, that's what I would do is, is do All that. Right. So as you know, there's plenty of different avenues in real estate, plenty of different asset classes. So why is short-term rentals your favorite? Um, short-term rentals is my favorite, um, is because it, 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 um, it fulfills a part of my why and my dream, which is to have properties in multiple, multiple locations across the country. Um, you know, like I said, this past weekend, I just had family that came in and, um, they, I had an opportunity to host them at our property. And that was just something that I wouldn't be, have been able to do if I didn't have my own short-term rentals. You know, if it was a long-term rental, then, uh, it wouldn't have been available. Um, but also the other thing is, is cash flow. I mean, I, I long-term, um, long-term properties are great for the passive investors who aren't looking to do anything, uh, look, aren't looking to be active in, in the space because it is, it, you know, it is a little bit active, but as you, as you get the systems down, um, you can cut down a lot of that, that act active activity. Um, but in terms of cash flow, it's totally different. I mean, a, a, a typical, uh, long-term rental might bring in five to a thousand dollars, 500 to a thousand dollars in, in rent per, per month in cash flow per month. Right. But as a short-term rental, um, you can expect, you know, depending on the property, if it's a three bedroom in a, you know, in a somewhat okay area, you can expect 
you know, two to three to four grand a month net cash flow. And that's not even, you know, um, that's not even on top of like the little things that you can do, like charging for early check-in, charging for late checkouts, charging for a pet fee, charging for, um, uh, for if, you know, they want like extra cleaning to be done while they were all types of event or pool heat. Right. And so like all of those things, I mean, just on our er, like early check-in and late checkout, we're, we're netting around, you know, two to $400 a month, uh, per property. Some long-term rentals don't even make that. Right. You're making that off the pool heat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I mean, our pool heat, we usually bring in about 500 to $800 a month, um, just on pool heating amenities. And so, like, like little things like that, it just like, it's a, it's kind of like a no brainer, but it, again, it like, it itches, uh, it scratched the itch for, you know, me being able to host friends and family, which is what I kind of grew up around. You know, my, my family hosted a lot of like parties and, you know, get together. So I get to scratch that itch, but then also the cash flow side is just, um, something that, you know, just really resonated with me. It's like cash flow and steroids. Uh, it's all I can say. And if you have the right pricing strategy, um, you know, the sky's the limit. I swear no one's on steroids here. (laughs) Just a whole bunch of really good content and, you know, blue gems that this man is dropping. Um, Last thing, and it can be about real estate. It can be about investing. It can be about short-term rentals. It can be about life or anything that you want to share. Last blue gem for the audience it can be anything. What is it? Um, the last blue gem I would say is um, build your relationship. Mm-hmm. Your relationships is everything. I mean, I, you know, I, and, and not just professionally, but like, you know, your relationships at home with your spouse or your significant other, you know, make sure that that's on point because if you're, if, if everything at home is secure, that you can focus and go out and, and go and battle the world and you can come home and knowing that everything is tight as a rock at home, like you can do anything if you have a good support system at home. Um, and, and, you know, for business, you know, go, go in and, and talk to people, go and shake hands, go to conferences, go pay to be, you know, pay for proximity is what uh, my high school uh, my high school coach says, right? <laughs> uh, he says, pay for proximity because proximity is power. Just being in, and, and my life has changed for the, yeah. you know, the last 12 months is because since, you know, I joined uh, uh, a little mentorship by our, our my, men, my mentor, uh, Pace Morby, um, sub two. And, you know, in there, I've, I've grown to made all new friends and really, you know, whatever industry that you decide to go into, if it's even if it's not real estate, whatever it is, immerse yourself in that arena, in that crowd and, you know, make friends along the way. Like I really don't have people that I connect with. I have friends. When I go to events, I don't try and connect. I I go and I make friends. I don't talk about real estate. And I think this is one of the things that I can really say would be a blue gym is when you go to quote unquote networking event, or if you go into places that you know that there are people that you want to connect with, don't be like every other person there and trying to connect. And let's say it's a real estate event. Everyone there is in real estate. I, I will make it my, my mission that like that real estate is the last thing I talk about. Because people are normal people too. Like they are, they want to hang out. They want to have fun. They want to, you know, they're normal people just like you and me after our long day at work, we go home. We just want to, you know, we just want to maybe go and snuggle with our significant other and, and just talk about random things, right? Go and, you know, uh, get into trouble, right? And so, uh, when you go to those things, just make friends, like get friends and get phone numbers right? Skip the social media, just get the phone numbers because the thing is you're willing to do something for your friends, uh, uh, more often than you're willing to do it for yourself. Right. And so if you become friends with these guys, you really, you know, 
instead of, oh, hey, can I ask for, you know, can I ask for a favor? Can you help me with certain things? Your friend is going to go out of their way and help you out. Then if you're just a, a acquaintance that connected at a random networking event. Awesome. Man. Wow. Man, I love that. Mind blown, bro. Yeah. This is was amazing thank you so much brother thank, thank you. you so much oh my where can people yeah, learn more time. about you bro yep. they're gonna want to know uh my my so they can connect with me on uh on uh social media at uh, i'm mostly on instagram so uh hung h-u-n-g v as in victor m-a-i uh so that's my handle and then should, should i give out my phone number too if you want to man you want absolutely to. I mean, so, uh, so my phone number is 407-401-3361. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to kind of help out if you're new to the space and, uh, anything that, you know, that your audience need, I, you know, I'd love to be a, a helping hand. Um, yeah. Awesome. Anything that you guys need. I just got that phone number too. I'm going to ask you that for some Vietnamese food. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thanks so much, brother. Yeah, for Thank sure. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it.